Well, uh, it's, it's a pleasure for me to talk to you about the Blackity Man. You're one of my favorite directors, so this is a, is a real treat. Oh, thank you, Travis. So, yeah, Appreciate man, thanks. So talk to me about how you came aboard this film. We all know a ska- the film's kind of started out as a sketch and kind of was expanded into this movie, but how did you come aboard it? I came on as a producer early on. Uh, it was uh, brought to me. I watched the sketch immediately. I said, this is hilarious. And then, um, of course, I knew Tracy, along with Dwayne, would go off and try to make it a film. And, you know, we would see what happens. And about a year and a half later, um, maybe a little less, uh, they brought it to me. I read it and I just flipped. Um, I just flipped. I I thought it was so clever, so funny. And I was looking to do something kind of like a, you know, quote unquote indie um, or just a smaller budgeted movie. Mm-hmm. And um, and I said, you know, and I actually uh, spoke to them and said, guys, what if I directed this? And and they didn't say no, thankfully. Um, <laughs> and because uh, I just thought, it was, you know, when you read a script and you just see the movie, I I've learned to not walk away from that. When you see right. it and you feel and it feels good, just uh, go for it and see what happens. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I can only imagine uh, the thoughts running through your head the first time you read this script uh because it's it's hilarious i i watched it in a, in a in a packed crowd full of people who were with it the entire oh that's day. the best way to see it man yeah, it's the best way I, I had some friends you saw it at uh at a uh, tiff and i was like i think it's probably better to see it at a at a regular screening with regular folks but yeah, you'd uh, be surprised that tip screening was unreal it that's, was that's unreal. awesome that's awesome but uh but you know when you're making a movie like this though like and you're drawing on horror tropes did you have like visions in mind of how you wanted to like lay out like the, the production, the look of the film? Did you draw from some influences? Yeah, what was cool is to go back and, and check out the old slasher movies I grew up mm-hmm. on, everywhere from Freddy Krueger to, um, or Nightmare on Elm Street, as I should call it. Um, you know, Friday the 13th, Halloween, uh, Child's Play, you know, or some know it as Chucky. Yeah. Um, all of those type of films, um, I went back and checked out and I started to kind of draw on this, wow, you know, from the lighting, you know, um, the, the edgy, the edgier look, you know, in in comedy, I don't always get a chance to kind of uh, work in the shadows a little bit. And right. so it was, it was looking at stuff like that. It was looking at, um, you know, music from a standpoint is, you know, unless it's a joke in comedies, I don't always get a chance to kind of get to those low bass rumbles and those things that make you kind of make the hopefully make the the back of your you know neck kind of crawl or something as before something happens even these things that you put on um uh jump scares and so i just found that in going back and preparing for this movie one i realized how much how much of a fan i was of horror and how much i did uh grow up on it and then you know and two you know um you started to just, I just started to really get into, um, now that I'm looking at these movies with a different eye, I just got into how um, a, a moment is created, how a scare moment is created, how a, a chase can be, um, um, you know, kind of just kind of grow in intensity and all of that stuff. So um, I had a ball with it. I had a, I had a really good ball with it. Did, that, did, you, did you find that to be a challenge, kind of balancing the humor and the the horror aspects of it? Because I imagine that's like, that's a difficult thing to, to get just right. You know, definitely a challenge, but kind of a, um, the, the greatest challenge in the world. You know, I have a lot of fun uh, walking the tightrope between whether it's romance and comedy or action and comedy. Yeah. Um, and here it was with horror and comedy. And you found that as long as I was, um, as long as I was re- respectful of the horror genre, um, I figured it would work. And and, you know, I kind of feel like I'm, I feel pretty comfortable in comedy. And so by having these two things, you know, then you get into this editing room and that's where you really kind of put it together. And that's where you really find, you know, you know, holding on shots a little longer than I'm used to, you know, in terms of someone walking up towards a, a situation that's going to probably scare them a second. So it's it just became fun just to kind of um, uh, walk that tightrope and. Uh, sometimes I was comfortable. Sometimes I had to put it in front of a few people and say, "Does this work?" And um, and it and it you know we we turned out with something that we're pretty proud of. Did it get you thinking about the horror tropes? Because we all know the the not just the regular horror tropes, but the horror tropes that apply to to black characters. 
did it get you thinking about those? And were there? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> no, it, they, it, it, it did. You know, the, the cool thing about it is, and that's why when I, when I think of a horror comedy, if you have a whole cast of black people in a horror film, it's going to be funny regardless. Right. So we just had a chance to kind of take it to the nth degree. Um, we as a we as a people uh, respond uh, specifically in certain situations, and <laughs> when we are scared and, and there is the chance of um, um, someone harming us, uh, we we act a certain way, and so we just kind of <laughs> leaned into the fact that we were making a comedy, although we did not want to go too spoofy. We always wanted to be sure the stakes were real. Yeah, we didn't allow our cre creativity to be limited, and anytime something was funny to us or fun and we could speak to the culture, um, we went for it. <laughs> um, the entire cast is funny in this. And like, I imagine that that it's a, it was a, a damn funny set. I mean, I'm trying it, to, I'm trying to imagine how you managed to get through any scenes at all uh, with oh, it, people in the cast. What, what are some of the funniest moments you can remember for this? Well, I think any moment that they were all in the room together, because they became such close friends, uh, most of them did not know one another. I think right. I think X and Dwayne might have known each other, but for the most part, nobody knew each other. And they became this family immediately. So when you got on set and you needed to um, kind of just, you know, you know, get ready for a scene, they, they would be talking and, and messing with each other like brothers and sisters. And I found that many times I would just let that go. And I even found that I had to tell the cameraman, the crew to look, I'm not going to stop this. I know sometimes they like to work in, in, you know, in kind of, I don't want to say silence, but they do like to work in quiet. I had to kind of get them used to guys. I'm going to let them yell at each other and be funny and have a, because that energy to try to get that energy back up once I yell action, yeah, it's not going to happen. So sometimes they would have to work with sign language and put that light there and do this because I didn't want them to mess with the synergy that we were creating and then every now and then i would just yell action in the middle of them talking to one another and they would scramble to get into their plot parts and then go and so right. it it was a lot of situations like that anytime these guys were all in the same room together it was it was chaos but like this organized and beautiful chaos it does seem it, like it seems like there's a lot of uh freedom to improvise then yeah uh, with, I, these, with, these, with these actors involved and it comes all across that way on the screen so is that is that how it was a lot of Freedom to improvise with these with these. Well, characters? what's interesting about this situation is you'd be, you'd be surprised at how much was on the page. Mm -hmm. But what was always I'm always giving that type of freedom to actors uh, to add that magic, to add those little nuances that are personal to them. And we got a lot of that. You know, we got a lot of um, these little once they kind of know what the scene is and they they know where it's going. I kind of encourage that. And, you know, I can always cut it out. So anytime a, an actor had an idea, um, especially having Dwayne there, who was also the writer on yeah. the set, uh, he, we would just let them go. And, and sometimes we found, oh, wow, that'll dovetail into this thing or another thing. Or, but um, I, I'm, I encourage that because I think once actors really start to get into their characters, there's going to be things that come out that are just right. natural. One of the things I like, and I think that other people will like about the movie, is that I think everyone can identify with the way one character reacts to the situation, right? I, so, I love you saying. Is there is there a particular character in this that you think best reflects how you would react in this insane nightmare scenario? Oh wow, good question. Um, wow, I never thought about it um, <laughs> because I I feel like I'm very logical and kind of thought. Right. Uh, I think through it. Um, that's a good question because <laughs> I, I think I, I might. Oh, no, I, yeah, it, it's interesting that you say that. I, I, I pr probably not. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, if I was to pick somebody closest, it'd be kind of a combination of, of um, probably, you know, Sinqua and <laughs> and Dwayne, a little bit of great, like. Yeah. I, there's a logic to them that I would like to believe I would 
have in a situation like this. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so it's probably a combination of some of the guys. Well, it sounds like they need to write a character like you in the sequel then, or whenever they At, now it's somebody who act like well, he would just run away. He would somebody just, who acts like you would, yeah, just run away. <laughs> just, I would just hide. You know? <laughs> well, Tim, this has been fantastic, man. Uh, I appreciate you taking some time to talk to Blackening with me. Uh, the film opens on June sixteenth. Am I am I right about that? June sixteenth, correct? June sixteenth. Uh, please 16th. go see it. We need your support. All right, man. You got it. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Travis. All right. Thanks. Thanks for checking out the show. If you like what we're laying down, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest stuff. 